It's time to be serious, folks. I know we all love the MCU. It's one of the greatest achievements in all of cinema, after all. I know we all love Star Wars, one of the most iconic film franchises ever. But I'm not here today to talk to you about either one of those franchises as great as they are. I'm here to talk to you about the mega company that owns them both. Disney. It's well documented that Disney is quite the powerhouse in not only the realm of cinema, but in the realm of entertainment in general. They have their feet planted firmly in entertainment mediums such as movies, television, video games, books, comic books, toys, theme parks, and all types of merchandise from clothes to collectibles. And you know what? You have to commend them. They have won the game of capitalism. Let's shift gears for a second. In 2011, the Indianapolis Colts played the New Orleans Saints. Peyton Manning was out for the season, and the game, well, it didn't go too well for the Colts. In fact, it was the biggest blow in recent NFL history. The Saints eviscerated the Colts on Sunday Night Football, much to my chagrin, by a score of 62-7. to How does this relate to Disney, you may ask? Well, Disney is the Saints in this scenario. They had plenty of points by the third quarter of the game, but they kept on scoring. Likewise, Disney already owned so many properties. And then they went and bought 21st Century Fox. And I know what you're thinking. Some of you probably think that this merger is a good thing. I mean, it is if you're an MCU fan. Marvel just got the X-Men and the Fantastic Four amongst other heroes. They'll surely incorporate them into the MCU in the near future. Others of you may simply not care. Movies are movies. Who cares who makes them? Well, I'm here today to tell you that this is bad. Real bad. Not only for the future of cinema, but for audiences and consumers as well. Now, before we get to the nitty gritty, I'm going to go ahead and rattle off the many, many properties Disney owns. <clears throat> ABC, 80% of ESPN, Touchstone Pictures, Marvel, Lucasfilm, 50% of A&E, 50% of the History Channel, 50% of Lifetime, Pixar, Hollywood Records, most of Hulu, 10% of Vice Media, Core Publishing, and 21st Century Fox. That's a lot. <laughs> That's a lot of damage. Too much, actually. Especially with the addition of 21st Century Fox. See, there are only really six big movie studios. Disney, Universal, Paramount, Warner Brothers, Sony, and 21st Century Fox. Now that's a lot of damage! With the acquisition of Fox, Disney alone now accounts for one-third of those studios. There's a word for what Disney is precariously close to doing. It's a word we're all very familiar with, whether you learned it from the game or from high school history class. Monopoly. Monopoly may be a fun game, depending on who you ask, but it is no joke in real life. Disney is coming closer and closer to being able to monopolize the blockbuster market. Simply put, the first part of this is that the more studios Disney acquires, the more control it can exert over movie theaters. Disney can tell theaters, you want to play our movies? All right, well, you have to show them on the biggest screens, and you have to have 30 showings a day. Again, on the surface, this may not seem so bad. I can go see Toy Story 4 at almost any time of the day. And this is absolutely true. There will be more showings, but for less films. And the films that will suffer here are the original ones. It's already tough enough for original films to make a decent turn at the box office. Hell, 20th Century Fox and Fox Searchlight were known for producing more original films and straying from the blockbuster trend. But Disney may not see these divisions of Fox as profitable anymore. If they were to dissolve them, we'd miss out on more original films, and it's only going to get worse. Any original or indie films will be pushed to more niche theaters like Draft Houses or won't even have a theatrical release and go straight to streaming services. Which wouldn't be so bad if Disney wasn't also forcing itself on the streaming service front as well, but we'll get to that in a bit. The second negative aspect to a looming Disney monopoly is that they can charge more. Ticket prices may go up. 
This is where I could potentially see some backlash from audiences, but it'll likely be too late. Furthermore, Disney won't have to innovate. They'll make the same kinds of movies over and over again, and people will pay to see them because that's all there is. Innovation is expensive. Why would Disney do that when they can make billions at the box office with a sequel like Endgame? And again, this is already happening. Disney rarely makes an original film these days. It's all sequels, prequels, remakes, or reboots. The more properties Disney controls, the less original content we will get. Let's go back to streaming services. As many of you are aware, Disney Plus will be launching later in 2019. The goal is for it to compete with Netflix and Hulu, amongst others, for dominance in the streaming service realm. Now, it's an appropriate time to remind you that Disney already owns a majority share of Hulu, especially now with the addition of 21st Century Fox. Additionally, Disney Plus will cost $7 at launch. Just $7, which is cheaper than both Netflix and Hulu's standard plans. But let's not be naive here. Disney Plus will absolutely not remain at $7 for long. In fact, likely only long enough for Disney to pry the market away from Netflix's cold, dead hands. Once that happens, the price will go up and up and up. In an attempt to keep up with Disney, Netflix will try to pump out attractable franchises, but will ultimately fail. I mean, Stranger Things is good and all, but what is that compared to the likes of Star Wars, Marvel, Pixar, and all the classic Disney films? Disney could foreseeably control both the film market and the streaming market, and that's terrifying. Make no mistake, folks, a Disney-controlled monopoly on the entertainment industry is bad for everyone but Disney and its shareholders. Now, I'm not asking you to stop going to see Disney movies. I certainly won't myself. But by no means do I want to see original films brushed off to the side. I want a healthy balance. Unfortunately, it's looking more and more like all the mouse has to do is snap his white-gloved fingers and the original films will fade away. This will usher in a world where ticket prices and subscription rates are higher, theaters are essentially under Disney's control, and films are less creative in general. And don't think Disney's done yet. In a few more years, maybe Paramount will fall to Disney, or Universal. Disney will rally even more blockbuster properties to its name, and we will all be truly cinematically screwed. Well, that's it for this one, folks. I'd love to end this on a hopeful note, but I just don't foresee a future in entertainment that Disney doesn't control. Just take a look around the world you're living in. I go to my local theater, and in the lobby where upcoming film posters are displayed, they're all... they're all Disney films. It's been that way for a few years now. Again, Disney has done some great things, and they've made some phenomenal films. But I just don't want their success to result in the death of the original film.